on March the 7th, the church remembers Perpetua and Felicitas. Here we are today with Tom Peach to talk about who they are and their influence on us today. So, Tom, good to have you back on Kairos. It's been a little bit of a break. Fantastic to be back. Really good to be here. Tell us about these uh, two women, Perpetua and Felicitas. So, um, they are both martyrs of the early church. Um, I'm cutting to the end of the story straight away. It ends badly in one sense, but in the final ending is more glorious. They died in the year 203 under a persecution, and their two young women, Perpetua was a noble woman, and Felicitas was her servant, and mm-hmm. they died together. Um, and so, third century, what part of the world are we talking about? They lived in North Africa, in mm-hmm. Carthage, and they actually weren't raised Christians. They, um, though, became interested in the faith. Sometimes people think everyone was always persecuted in the early church, and that wasn't the case. There were periods of persecution. Sometimes it was okay that an emperor would wake up on the wrong side of the bed and, and suddenly the whole world is, being, is persecuting Christians again. In this case, the emperor cracked down, it appears to be, on converts. Mm. It was if he said, oh, if you're already Christian, we're going to put up with that. Mm-hmm. We don't want any more, though. And um, Perpetua and Felicitas, her servant, were both... Um, catechumens. They were, they were interested in, in the faith. They were converting. And, um, and this, um, um, it, even when they were interested in Christianity, Perpetua's father, who would have been a nobleman, um, warned her, this is going to cause trouble. Mm. A- and sure enough, it does. She gets arrested, um, put in prison with a few other Christians as well who were caught up in the persecution. But it's Perpetua's and Felicitas's story which really um, um, makes the biggest splash on the Christian world. It's interesting, that situation. You st- I mean, you still get contexts like that in the world today where Christians are tolerated, but there's no converts, you know, oh, yeah. particularly from yeah. certain ethnicities and that sort of thing. It's interesting how far back in the church that can go. So yeah. they're in prison. What happens next? So they're in prison and um, um, they're, they're scheduled to be killed. Perpetua has a young um, son. And, and so this is especially... Um, um, Solomon and, and terrible. She, we actually have an account, and this is one of the reasons why we remember them and why their impact was so great. We have an account of their martyrdom. It looks like Perpetua herself wrote it or dictated it. It's in the first person. And, um, and so we hear from her own voice what was going on. She even speaks of her breasts um, um, bursting with milk because she can't mm. feed her young so, baby. So the son's not there with her. The son her isn't there. Well, they bring, it, bring, um, bring the son in and, and she gets relief. Mm. And, um, and then it's taken away. Her father comes to her and begs her, what are you doing for the sake of your son, for the sake mm. of me? Um, he tears out his beard. He, he's in such anguish. And um, Perpetua, though, has this cool, calm, collected... Um, um, approach and she says with confidence that whatever God's will, God wills will happen and, um, and she faces her death with a, a kind of a peace um, that is hard to imagine given both her child and her father mm. um, were in such great need of her. Um, Felicitas, interestingly, is also um, pregnant in jail wow. and, um, and she goes through her pregnancy in jail. The two of them are inseparable at one point, it even looks like Perpetua, the noble woman, is going to be go to her death, um, and Felicitas is going to miss out on going with her because of her. She was eight months pregnant, mm-hmm. and I, I think I remember it was something about it, illegal to execute a pregnant woman, perhaps, or some, something like yeah, this. Yeah, I think you're right. This is mm. one of the, the laws, and so she couldn't um, um, be perse- she couldn't be killed. They wanted to be killed together. They pray. Um, God brings on labor early um, in the, after eight months. Um, Felicitas has the baby and they're all good to go for, um, for their martyrdom. Um, when the time for martyrdom comes, there's even reports then also of Felicitas's breasts dripping with milk because she's just so recently given um, birth mm. that she's still in the um, kind of post-labor, um, early motherhood mm. stage. And, and I think this is, it's one of the most poignant parts of this whole um, episode. Obviously, the last part of the martyrdom isn't written by them because they're mm. players in, in, the, in the play. But um, probably Tertullian, an early church um, father, wrote the last few paragraphs. 
giving a, an eyewitness account of what actually happened in the martyrdom. Wow. And so the, the church story is, of course, um, we, we have martyrs right through and we have this incredible witness of those um, who are willing to go to their very uh, death rather than deny Christ. Yeah. Um, we can be encouraged and inspired by all of them. But what about these two in particular? Is there anything about them that the church has looked to and said there's, some, there's something specific here, uh, specific ways in which we can be encouraged by their example? I mean, they're cut down in the prime of life. There's no mm. other way of, um, of, of putting it. And so it's hard to think of people in, in the greater prime. Um, so one little part of the story, I think, is their fertility. Mm -hmm. they're, they're obviously potently fertile with, with mm -hmm. children, and um, which itself can become a kind of a God. And so here there's almost even a, a, an acknowledgement that God is the giver of all life, and he is the one fertile unto eternity and so even their laying down of, of this potency and fertility before God is is made such an impact. I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this is a I remember it's in an Augustine sermon 200 years later around about the same place in Carthage so by that stage Perpetua and Felicitas were local heroes, um, local martyrs. He had to tell his congregation, warn them that the story of their death isn't on the same level as scripture um, <laughs> because it, they were just so dearly revered for mm. this incredible courage and sacrifice. So connected with that, I think, and for us today, is um, people who are, um, I mean, one, those whose families disprove of them being Christian mm -hmm. and maybe sometimes even for reasons that have some cogency or persuasion in this yeah, case the yeah. father said give it up look you, you've got a little kid you've got so much in front of you right. the pe person says to the young right. the young guy who's considering becoming a christian or, or maybe serving in the church you've got your whole life in front of you all these prospects yep. why why are you going to take this path these yeah. are the saints um, mm -hmm. um they don't wait i'm not going to wait till i follow christ later mm -hmm. on after mm -hmm. i've managed to enjoy the sweetness of life and the prime of life mm -hmm. And, um, but, but not just even the call to be Christian, even sometimes the call to, um, as you say, to take up a vocation, um, the call to um, go the extra mile, and sometimes we can hide behind the fact that I've got a kid, mm -hmm. or, um, or oh, I want to please my parents, I don't want to... And here they just have a, a courage which is stronger than death, a, a love even that's stronger than death. And so I think for anyone facing some difficulty in their Christian journey, um, from family or, or even just from a, an own, their own sense of vocation, uh, vocation and not wanting to rock the boat or, or, or lose my house or, or things like this. There's a lot of courage here from um, these two to um, take up your cross and follow Christ and um, for the adventure that lasts to eternity. Hmm. Well, March the 7th, Perpetua and Felicitas, these uh, two faithful martyrs to women of the early church. Um, Tom, thanks again for being with us on Kairos today. My pleasure. Yeah.